Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP lecture series. This is the third video in the lecture series and in this video we will learn about different operations on sequences. Specifically, modulation, addition, scaling, time shifting and folding operations. So let's start our lecture. The first basic operation is modulation. Let x of n and y of n be two known sequences. Then modulation operation is performed to form a new sequence w1 of n where w1 of n is the product of the sample values of the sequences x of n and y of n at each instance. This operation is also called product operation for obvious reasons. So product operation. Now the device implementing the modulation operation is called a modulator and its schematic representation is like this. Now let's see an example. We have two sequences x of n and y of n. Let us try to find the modulated output w1 of n. Here in this example although the sequences are of same length the sample x of 0 in both the sequences do not coincide. So let's write the sequences accordingly. We have x of n equal to 3.2 41 36 minus 9.5 0 and 0. Similarly we have y of n equal to 0 1.7 minus 0 0.5 0 0.8 1 now the nth sample in each case can be multiplied and we get w1 of n equal to 3.2 into 0 which is 0, 41 into 1.7 which is 69.7, minus 0 0.5 into 36 which is minus 18, 0 into minus 9.5 which is 0, 0 0.8 into 0 which is again 0 and 1 into 0 which is again 0. So this is the modulated sequence of x of n and y of n. Next we have addition operation. Here the new sequence w2 of n is obtained by adding the sample values of the two sequences x of n and y of n. The device implementing the addition operation is called adder and its schematic representation is like this. Let us also see an example for addition. Taking the same sequence of x of n and y of n from the previous example, we will need to modify the sequence in the same way as before. So let me just copy and paste this region. Okay, here we have it. Now let's perform the addition operation. So w2 of n is obtained as 3.2 plus 0 which is 3.2 41 plus 1.7 which is 42.7 36 plus minus 0.5 which is 35.5 minus 9.5 plus 0 which is minus 9.5 0 plus 0.8 which is 0.8 and 0 plus 1 which is 1. So this is the new sequence obtained by addition operation on x of n and y of n. Now let's move to the third basic operation, scalar multiplication. Here each sample of the original sequence is multiplied by a scalar a to obtain the new sequence. The device implementing the multiplication operation is called a multiplier and its schematic representation is like this. As an example, Let's take our sequence x of n and multiply it with a scalar 5. 
so the new sequence w3 of n will be 3.2 into 5 which is 16 41 into 5 which is 205 36 into 5 which is 180 minus 9.5 into 5 which is minus 47.5 0 into 5 which is 0 so this is the new sequence w3 of n also i just remembered that i forgot to mark the n equal to 0 point on this sequence so i'm just marking it here okay now the fourth basic operation is time shifting time shifting operation as the name implies shifts the sequence forward or backward in time the relation between time shifted version and the original sequence is like this where x of n is the original sequence and w4 of n is the time shifted sequence and capital N is an integer. If capital N is greater than 0, then we are delaying the samples and the operation is called delaying operation. Let's see this in action. Consider the sequence z of n and here is how it looks like on a graph. Also, I am indexing each sample for reference. So this is z of 0, this is z of 1, this is z of 2, this is z of 3, similarly this is z of minus 1, z of minus 2 and z of minus 3. Now let's delay this sequence by 2 units, that is we set n equal to plus 2. Then w4 of minus 3 equal to z of minus 3 minus n and n is plus 2. So minus 2 equal to z of minus 5 but z of minus 5 is not given in the sequence. So let us assume it as 0. Next we have w4 of minus 2 and we have z of minus 2 minus 2 which is z of minus 4 and again z of minus 4 is absent so let us take it as 0. Now w4 of minus 1 equal to z of minus 1 minus 2 which is z of minus 3 and z of minus 3 is minus 6 so we have minus 6. Next w4 of 0 equal to z of 0 minus 2 which is z of minus 2 and z of minus 2 is minus 4 so minus 4 and if you proceed in similar fashion you get w4 of 1 equal to minus 2 w4 of 2 equal to 0 w4 of 3 equal to 2 w4 of 4 equal to 4 and w4 of 5 equal to 6. On plotting this new sequence, we can see that the discrete signal is delayed by 2 units than the original signal, right? Thus you can see how n greater than 0 can result in delaying operation. On the other hand, if capital N is less than 0, then we are advancing the sample and the operation is called advancing operation. You can try this yourself by setting a negative integer value for capital N. You can try it on the same sequence set of N and see how the discrete signal will look like after performing the advancing operation. Now the device implementing delay operation by one sample is called a unit delay and its schematic representation looks like this. You will understand why we are using this set raise to minus 1 simple when we study about set transform of sequences. Nextly, the device implementing advancing operation by one sample is called a unit advance and its schematic representation looks like this. The last basic operation is time reversal. This is also called folding operation. If we perform folding operation on a sequence x of n, then the new sequence is w6 of n 
where w6 of n is x of minus n. So if we take our sequence x of n, then w5 of n will be 0 minus 9.5 36 41 and 3.2 so this is the new sequence w5 of n okay so far we learned the five basic operations and how they are schematically represented however in most applications rather than having a single operation the combinations of these basic operations are used let us see one such example this block diagram shows a discrete time system obtained by the combination of basic operations. We will analyze this diagram to determine the value of y of n. If you see, this is a multiplier and the input to it is x of n. So the output of the multiplier is alpha 1 into x of n. Now here we have a unit delay and the input to it is x of n. So the output here will be x of n minus 1. This x of n minus 1 passes through a multiplier with scalar alpha 2. So the output here is alpha 2 into x of n minus 1. Now this x of n minus 1 also passes through this unit delay. So here we have x of n minus 2. And just like before, here we have alpha 3 into x of n minus 2. Finally, here we have x of n minus 3 due to this unit delay. And here we have alpha 4 into x of n minus 3 due to this scalar multiplier. Now finally, all these inputs are fed to an adder circuit. And as we learned, an adder circuit adds up all the inputs to it. So the final output y of n is y of n equal to alpha 1 of x of n plus alpha 2 of x of n minus 1. So alpha 2 of x of n minus 1 plus alpha 3 of x of n minus 2. Therefore alpha 3 of x of n minus 2 plus alpha 4 of x of n minus 3. So alpha 4 of x of n minus 3. So this is the expression for the discrete sequence y of n. Now I will give you another discrete system to analyze. You can try it as a homework. Also comment on how you obtain the answer so it will be helpful for others also. Now to summarize the lecture, we learned about five basic operations which are modulation, addition, scalar multiplication, time shifting and time reversal. I hope all the concepts that were taught in this lecture were clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you out. If you found the lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Topperly and have a great day.